I recently purchased a DNP dye sublimation printer for my photo booth operation. Part of the reason why I choose the DNP is so that we can print really fast on site and it's also highly cost effective. One of the main questions that a photographer has been asking me about DNP is that should we just print using the default profile that comes with the DNP driver or should we custom profile it? So what I'm going to do in this video is print out images using the default profile that came with the DNP driver and also we're going to custom profile this DNP dye sublimation printer using the X-Rite i1 Studio color spectral photometer and the i1 Studio software. I'm Art Suwon Sang, this is Artist Right, and let's get started. So I have a lot of equipment with me for this video. Let's start first with my reference display, the BenQ SW270C 2K hardware calibrated display. This is what I'm going to be using to view my images on, or at least that you guys can see for this video. And then we're going to use this to compare it to our light box here, which is uh, on courtesy from GTI, Graphic Technology Inc. This is their PVD3E line of Lightbox Professional Desktop Viewer. Inside here, there are two fluorescence T8 bulbs that are calibrated to D65. And that's something that we need to note for this video is that when we're viewing these prints, we're going to view them using a D65 light source. But what happens is when we're viewing it on the screen, our screen is going to be calibrated in this case to D65 white points. So there's going to be a little bit of a mismatch there, but the colors should come out fairly close to each other. And lastly, our DNP here, this happens to be a DNP DS DP620A. So what I'm going to do here is print 4x6. This one can print anything with about a 6 inch width or you can also do 5x7 print. There's a few sizes you can do, but this one can't print 8x10 or anything like that. So just something to keep in mind there. So the printer is already on and what I like to do first is let's go ahead and custom profile this printer so that we can start out with that and then afterwards we'll do printing between the default profile and the custom profile. And we're going to do a few different pictures from vacation photos to pet photos to pets that are really white on a white background to see how those color looks and then we'll compare them to each other on this GTI light box here. All right, so let's get started with those. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and call up the i1 Studio software. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pick the i1 Studio here, which is this one. Now you also see in the background there too that the color monkey photo will also work in its case. So if you have an older color monkey photo, it will also work with the i1 Studio software, which they have running right now. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and click on color print. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select the printer. In this case, I'm gonna pick the DNP. DS620 paper size. This is what's really nice about the new i1 Studio software is that it no longer just prints on an eight and eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. It will print on various sizes of paper as you can see here. But the nice part is that it will also print on four by six paper. Something to keep in mind though is that when it prints on four by six paper, it will actually print out about 12 sheets or so quite a few sheets, so that's just something to keep in mind. But considering the cost of the pr per print of the DNP printer, it's really nothing. So you'll be fine with that. All right, so paper description here, we're gonna go ahead and use, I'm gonna go ahead and type in DNP default paper, because this is their default paper line that I'm using. It's just their standard one. It's not the, it's not the metallic or not the perforated kind or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and use DNP default here. And what I'm going to go ahead and click on print. Now, a few things here I want to go in and make sure is that I want to make sure that my go into my DNP print feature and the enable adjustment here, all these advanced things are just disabled. Let's go ahead and use high quality just for kicks and giggles. We'll see what happened there. We'll go ahead and click on print. And this is going to shoot out a whole lot of prints from a DNP printer here. So we'll give it a moment. Oops, I for now blank. So I was waiting for a DNP printer to finish. I have to cancel the print early because it prints out like this. Obviously, nothing like what we see on our screens. So what happened there? Well, it has to do with the paper orientation. Yours truly didn't go in and change it. So let me try that again and let's change the paper orientation this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on print and under orientation right here, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now this time it should print out properly. I'm going to go in and make sure that the DNP print features 
is all disabled. We're printing high quality still. Let's go ahead and click on print and let's see what happens now. So we're going to take these prints out for the time being. So that wraps up the first printing part. Now when you set the orientation correctly, this is how it's supposed to come out. The one thing that I have a comment about this is that I have a feeling that x ray can probably squeeze two rows in here. Instead of printing out 10 sheets, it could print five. But that's just my personal opinion. So x ray if you're listening, something to consider. But anyway, here are all the different color patches. And the nice thing about having a DNP printer, because these are die sub, I can go ahead and touch on these and don't have to really worry about them smearing anything because it's already laminated onto the print itself. So that's just something to keep in mind. We have 10 sheets of these total and we're going to go ahead and start to scan them in one at a time. So let's start with sheet number one. All right, so what we're going to do here is go ahead and put this down on the table. I'm going to go ahead and click next on the software. This way it's ready to measure. Again, with every color spectrophotometer, you need to measure it or do a custom calibration on it first with its own white point. And all of them are going to be built into the device. In this case, I just have to turn to the device to this part right here, which is the measuring part. Go ahead and turn the device around. There's a button here. I can go ahead and press that button or click on calibrate in the screen. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and press this button here. It is calibrating the i1 studio right now. And then once that is done, we'll go ahead and start scanning. All right, so now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the measuring point to this part where it has an opening. And because I don't have the case on, I don't have to worry about opening or close the flap that prevents it you know, from seeing. That's really only for display calibration, so I'm good here. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and place the color spectrophotometer down. I'm going to go ahead and start at the right here, right before one, and go ahead and hold down the button on the back there. Hold it all through, slide it slowly across, measuring patch one. So it says measuring column one on page two. So now we're just going to go through all of these columns here. So there is 10 columns that we're going to measure. See if that goes through. Nope, because I hit my laptop and that didn't happen. So let's go ahead and try that one more time here. Boom, just like that. That went through. So now let's continue on with three. Make sure you give yourself enough room to maneuver on your workspace here. Something to keep in mind too is that DNP media are fairly thick. However, I hold up to the light like this, you can probably see some of the shadows behind there. It's always a good idea to measure it on a white sheet of paper or on a white table or something like that because if you measure it on a dark table or if you're printing it on a thinner media, sometimes those causes bias with the color spectral photometer. So something to keep in mind there. But let's go ahead and continue here. I also want to bring something up to show our viewers too, is that if you look at the side by side here, the colors are somewhat drastically different where this one, it's really blue. This one's printing out more towards purple. So like I said, we'll see if this custom calibration helps a DNP printer or not. And we're measuring our last sheet here, 10 of 10. Measurement complete successfully. That is fantastic. We're going to go ahead and click next. What it's doing right now is that it's generating a second set of color patches that we need to measure. And if you watch my x rite i1 Studio video before, what it's doing right now is a process called iterative profiling. So based on these patches, it knows how much these are off. It's curating a specific set of patch that works specifically for this printer to make sure that the colors are really well and fine-tuned. So what I'm going to go ahead and do next is click on print again and we have to go through our print dialog and make sure that we set everything properly again as well. So I'm also going to change the orientation this time to horizontal. This way it comes out properly and I'm going to go into DNP print features and before we were printing using high quality, so I'm going to go ahead and set that again. The enable adjustment is off, so we're good. Something to keep in mind too, when you're using the i1 Studio software and you click on print, it will always default back 
to the same print settings, you know, with no adjustment on whatsoever. So you need to go in and make sure that you go into the granular setting of your printer and set everything the same because you want to eliminate all the variables that could change between these runs of these color patches. So I'm going to go ahead and click on print again and the DNP is going to make re really loud noises and we'll go ahead and fast forward that portion of the video. And that should be our very last print there. So we now have 10. I'm going to go ahead and reshuffle this. Also a quick shout out too. I got this printer from my local California dealer, Photo Club Inc. They're in Santa Fe Springs. They hooked me up with a special deal that has no tax. So it was one of the holiday promotions that I have, but it's actually really awesome. It's also a good idea too, if you buy a printer like this, that so you want to get it from your local dealer. This way, if there's any problems, you can just contact them directly. They're local. They usually take really good care of you. So that's just something to keep in mind too when you purchase your DNP printer. All right, let's go ahead and scan the second set. Another thing to keep in mind too that I kind of somewhat mentioned this already, but I'm going to mention this again, is that if you're running an inkjet printer, you definitely want to wait at least 10 minutes to have these color patches really dry down and soak into the paper. But again, dye sublimation, that's one of the nice thing about it, is not having to worry about smearing or smudging. So let's go ahead and measure page one and we'll go through 10 pages of this again. So we'll do that. There we go. Page one's done. Let's go ahead and put that there. All right. So the measurement of the second patch set was successful. I am going to click next and let's go ahead and name this DNP, DNP default. I'm going to go ahead and simplify the name a little bit. So what the profile naming does is that it has a date stamp, but also has a timestamp, which is helpful. But in this case, I don't want my ICC profile name to be extremely long string of information that I need or don't need in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify things down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and save this to version 4 and even if you're on a PC in this case because these are print profiles you can go ahead and save this version 4 you will be okay. I'm going to go ahead and save, click on save profile there. It's automatically going to put the profile in the right place for both the Mac and the PC in this case. So when I go into the program that I use in this case I'm going to print directly from Lightroom. I can go ahead and choose the profile there. So we're going to give it some time here is building up the profile right now or the ICC profile we're going to use. And it says this profile was created. Go ahead and press OK, press home, and then I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So what I'm going to do first is launch Lightroom and I'm going to print out a lot of landscape photos and compare them side by side. So let's go ahead and launch Lightroom first. Let's pick a few photos that we want to use. So I want to emphasize photo with some colors. So we're going to go through a variety of them. But one of them I want to print is this one because it has a lot of red. It has a lot of white. So highly saturated colors with a lot of white. I want to see, first of all, how would this one print using the default profile. In this case, this is the factory DNP profile that I have here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is set to that. Now, the other thing that you have to notice in Lightroom too is that there's always two different rendering intent here. This is not a video about rendering intent. And because I'm printing landscape here, I'm going to go ahead and use relative rendering intent. Um, there'll be another video out later on regarding the two different rendering intent and how they are different. So let, let's start with relative right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on printer. And DNP is there. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and zoom in here for you guys. Let's go ahead and click on print feature. We want to make sure that it's on high quality and the color adjustment or all the adjustment is off in this case because we're using the profile, even the one from a DNP. Now, if we need to do any adjustment on top of the print that's coming out, then we can go ahead and enable that. But in this case, we want to set a baseline. So I'm going to go ahead and set this baseline. This is going to be the default DNP profile. So we're going to go ahead and click print there. If you ever listen to a DNP printer run, you know that it does a really loud sound about three times. That's actually when it's laminating all those three colors together. So if you ever see a DNP ribbon, there is cyan, magenta, and the yellow color. So it's using all those to build up these photos right here. So this is the default profile from DNP. I'm going to go ahead and
set that right there. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add my profile that I've just created. So to add profile in Lightroom in color management here, the profile doesn't show up automatically. So what I need to go do is click on profile here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and click on others. This way it will load this profile dialog up for me. The one that I've just created is at the very top there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark on the profile I want to use here. Go ahead and press OK. Let's zoom out. It should automatically default to that profile and it did. So I'm going to go ahead and click on printer again. And again, I'm going to go and make sure that the DNP printer feature is correct. This way is high quality, glossy, and no color adjustments are on. Go ahead and click print again. And we're going to wait. So this is the one printed with our custom profile. Going to go ahead and pull this side by side here a little bit. And Interestingly enough, there is a difference. There is a difference in the white. So with the default DNP print driver from the factory, we can see here that the white is turning much bluer than this one. The white is a lot more neutral. You can see that on the side of building two, the red, just a slight more saturated. The red hasn't changed much, but definitely the white has changed for sure. So I think the white is much better with the custom profile that we created here let's go ahead and print out some other photos and let's see how that looks. So in this case, the white is going to make a difference if you are, for instance, printing pictures that you photograph on a white backdrop. This is really going to make a difference if this is the case. But if you're doing a color backdrop, it may not make a big of a difference. So let's pick some other samples to print here. What I'm going to do is let's go ahead and print something with this deep saturated blue, deep saturated green. This is the Aurora Borealis photo that I have. So again, what we're going to do is to keep things consistent, we're going to go ahead and print with the default print driver first. Go ahead and click on printer. By now, everything should be set. I can probably click on the print button down here right away, but I just want to be sure. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure the setting is correct, which it is. Click on print. And also what I'm going to do here is print two out right away. So I'm going to do the default profile and then the custom profile and then We'll do two out right away. This way we're not waiting. Let's take these and compare them. DNP default profile. Looks pretty good. I want studio custom profile. Even better. Let's take a look at that in full screen right there. So just based on what I see here, the blue, the colors and everything matches closer with the custom profile one. So we now have our answers a little bit further. Let's go in and pick another photo here. I like this photo a lot. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and print this photo out. Default profile. Custom profile. If we look in this picture, we can see that the grass here on our screen too, it's really neutral, just yellow. With our custom profile, it does make a big difference there. With the default profile, that yellow has a tendency to turn magenta. So we are seeing a lot of variations here. I think of these landscape photo gives you an insight in terms of the colors, the way how they're printing. And obviously what we can see here is that the custom printing profile is doing is magic here. It's working out really well. So I have a picture of this cute little kitten here. He's a little killer right there with his mouth open and everything. Really cute. So this one is photographed on white. He's yellow. Let's go ahead and print this out. They're really close on this one. If we examine a print closely, we can see that the way how lighting works is that in the white, many times it shows up a lot more blue. And we can see a little bit more blue shadow areas where this one's a lot more neutral on our little kitten here. And then the other thing too is that if you take a look at side by side, you look really closely, the yellow of his fur tend to pop out a little bit more on our custom profile. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind there. I've printed out a few more images for comparison. We're going to go through them really quickly here and then wrap up this video. But let's start out first with this yarn photo here. And you can see the full reference picture up on the screen there. What we can see 
from these is that the default profile tends to mute the green a little bit where the green really pops out in the custom profile that we have created. The purple tends to pop out a little bit more. It's a lot more realistic purple that you can see there. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at these photos. And also we're gonna pull in another photo here of a sunset shot. So we can see the sunset shot on the screen and the sunset shot looks a lot more yellow rather than orange. And with the default profile, our yellow sunset is looking really orange. That means there is a lot of magenta involved in there. It's amazingly enough holding the tones really well in the darker areas. However, when it comes to the light colors that you can see there in the sky, there is a big shift and a big difference where you can see on the reference display also that the color is really yellow and not orange in that case. Otherwise, there is a little bit more blue in the profile from the factory, but otherwise it's fairly good, like I said, in the shadow detail. So now that we have seen the difference between the default profile and the custom profile, personally for me, I would go in and custom profile my DNP printer any day, just because the print is coming out more accurate. And for instance, if we even just take a look at this sunset shot right here between the default and the custom profile, even under this lighting condition, you can still see the difference. So the custom profile is much more accurate. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool contents like this. And until next time, I just write.